Kami adalah keluarga besar gereja yang berdedikasi untuk melakukan perintisan gereja, menjangkau generasi berikutnya di kampus, dan memberitakan Injil ke setiap bangsa. Mari bersama-sama kita memuliakan Allah serta menjangkau banyak bangsa dan kampus. Karena itu, pergilah, jadikanlah semua bangsa muridku dan baptislah mereka dalam nama Bapa dan Anak dan Roh Kudus. Selamat hari Minggu, Jemaat Evening in Jakarta, dimanapun Anda berada, sungguh sukacita yang luar Happy Sunday, every nation Jakarta Church, wherever you may be, what a joy uh, it is for us to worship together this morning. Uh, through the live streaming YouTube. I would like to welcome you if this is your first time uh, joining us in our online service, Every Nation Jakarta. Welcome to all of you. Uh, what a blessing to be able to, to worship together with you. Before we start today, uh, I would like to share two announcements. One, uh, April 9th, uh, we will be holding an event Um, entitled Frustration to Fruitfulness uh, by Dr. S- uh, Sandy Oni. Uh, this um, will equip us in how we can deal with frustration and we will be able to learn it, uh, how to get out of frustration but also how we can become fruit- fruitful uh, when we get out of our frustration. For uh, more information, you can check out Uh, the brochure attached and my second announcement we will also be holding a, a good friday service a online service uh, with the other every nation churches all over indonesia on april 15 to uh, 2022 and we will observe on the the death and the sacrifice of jesus christ Uh, so please uh, take note and please join us. More information about this you can also check out in our website. Those are the announcements that I have. And we will continue our uh, service today by giving our uh, tithing and offering. Uh, it can be given through the QR code or the bank account attached here. Um, the Word of God in Psalm 23 talks about the Lord is our shepherd. Uh, verse 5 says, You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Let this word of God reminds us that God provides for us in any situation, any circumstances that we face, challenges that we face. He is God. He is our shepherd and He provides. And today I want to invite you To give with faith because we know that He has already prepared um, regardless and it, it doesn't depend on our current situations. Let's pray. God, uh, we want to give you thanks uh, for this morning because you are our shepherd. That you provide everything that we need in the midst of our challenges, difficulties that we face. We know that we can trust in you and you have provided. And today we want to give Uh, we want to do this uh, with faith because we know that you are God and our shepherd. Thank you, God. In the name of Jesus, we would like to give today. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Uh, again, uh, we want to thank you for your faithfulness and generosity in giving. And and we can, together we can uh, worship God and also make disciples. We will continue our service now uh, with our praise and worship time and let's give them praise and glory. Amen. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. 
Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. Yeah. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Come on, everybody, come on, sing. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes. Open the eyes of my heart. Open the eyes. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. To see you high and lifted up. Shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. To see you high and lifted up. Hey. Shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy. Shining the light of your glory, pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy to see you high and lifted up. Shining the light of your glory, pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. As we sing, holy, holy, holy. As we sing, holy, holy, holy. As we sing, holy, holy. One more time. As we sing, holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, 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 I want to see you. Holy, 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 I want to see you. Holy, holy. Kudus. Holy, holy, holy. Call kudos to hand. Holy, holy, holy. I want to see you. Holy, 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 holy. Holy, holy. We need you, Lord. Holy, holy, holy. I want to see you. Glory, pour out 
your power and love as we sing holy 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 as we say holy 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 as we sing holy 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 as we sing holy 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 open the eyes of my heart Lord Open the eyes of my heart I want, I want to see you, Lord I want to see you Open, open the eyes of my heart, Lord Open the eyes of my heart I want to see you I want to see you I want to see you. 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 Benar Tuhan, kami sangat butuh Engkau Tuhan. Kami butuh Engkau Tuhan. Bangsa ini butuh Engkau Tuhan. Kota ini butuh engkau Tuhan. Gereja ini butuh engkau Tuhan. Setiap elemen dalam kehidupan ini butuh engkau Tuhan. Oleh karena itu Tuhan. Satu hal yang kami bisa lakukan dan katakan. Kudus, kudus, kuduslah engkau. Terpujilah engkau di tempat yang maha tinggi Tuhan. Kami mengucap syukur. Sebab engkau Allah yang kudus. Yang kuat. Perkasa dan dahsyat. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. You were the word at the beginning. One with God the Lord most. Hidden glory in creation now reveal in you our Christ. What a beautiful name it is! What a beautiful name it is! The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. You didn't want heaven without us. So Jesus, you brought heaven down. My sin was great, your love was greater. So what could separate us now? What a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a wonderful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus. Oh, what a wonderful, powerful, beautiful your name. Holy, 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 holy You are holy You are holy That could not hold you The fail tore before you You silent the bones Of sin and grace The heavens are rolling For you are the glory, for 
Deuteronomy 3.24 says, O Lord God, you have only begun to show your servant your greatness and your mighty hand. For what God is there in heaven or on earth who can do such works and mighty acts as yours? This is the God that we worship. His name is above all names. He is King of all kings. His glory is all over the earth. His plans is much higher than our plans. And His greatness, His love and grace is even better than life. This is why He is the true God who is worthy at this time to receive all the glory, all the praise, because there is no other gods like Him. Thank you, Father. Thank you, God. Our life uh, can have hope because we walk with a God that is uh, cannot be compared to other gods. Thank you, Lord. Uh, Father, today, may you be present here with us in your word so that your word can transform, can heal, can restore our lives. Only in the name of Jesus, we pray. And we give you thanks. Amen. Amen. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Thank you, uh, music team. Brothers and sisters, today we will continue our series about trustworthy. This is a series that prepares us uh, in welcoming the Easter 
week and we'll be learning about the God's character. And after the series, uh, we our hope and our prayer is that you may uh, know God more and more and you may have uh, stronger faith, a firmer faith uh, in our lives. And our lives can be transformed through our series. Uh, there is a, a, a TV series that I often watch and there is always a game that they play in this TV show. And the uh, name of the, the game is uh, One Word. One word. Usually there's two groups. For each group, there's two people. And one person in that group will be given a word, one word. And this, this uh, person will have to say another word to describe that original word. And his partner will have to guess one word what that word is 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 uh, being described by the the partner so for example if i said to you the word 19 what would be what would be the word that i want to that i want to say if i give you a clue of 19 some may say uh, age or some other things but what's in my head the word is covid hence covid 19 so today i want to entitle this uh, sermon is only one word because today we will be looking at one word in Isaiah 6 that describes God's character of who He is. And this word is, is uh, uh, concluding all the attributes of God. And from this, we will learn that there is no God than, than, than our God. Are you ready to receive the word of God today? You may uh, speak to your neighbors and say, only one word, I'm ready. If you're in the live chat, you can say, I am ready. All right. So let's take a look in Isaiah 6, verse 1. It says, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up. And the train of his robe filled with the temple. This talks about the year when King Uzziah died. King Uzziah was a successful king. He enlarged the kingdom of Israel um, almost the same as when during uh, Solomon's and David's time. He started his kingdom for, uh, when he was 16. He made a lot of transformation in the nation of Israel. Uh, spiritually as well and he was uh, he lived in, in in by fearing the Lord at the beginning of his kingdom but then later on he did something that he wasn't supposed to do as a king uh, which was a duty of a priest he went into the high place and then God uh, punished him and, and gave him a, a, a sickness of uh, leprosy. And then he ended his life uh, in isolation with his leprosy. So after that, uh, there was a, a leadership crisis in Israel because all of a sudden the king passed away and it was a very sad moment for the nation as well as for Isaiah. They were wondering what kind of king will continue this kingdom. Same thing like us, you know, like when we are enjoying uh, perhaps uh, a government of a, of a president, uh, whenever there is a change of a president, there's probably uncertainty and fear for some of us of how the future is going to be with the new president. That's what happening with, with Israel. But then Isaiah said it in, in, in verse 1 that he saw the Lord sitting upon the throne. I want to tell you that in the midst of uncertainties that we live today, that we cannot hold on to, there is one thing that is certain, that God, that the Lord is sitting upon His throne. And He is in control over all our conditions. The situations at the time for Israel may be out of control for them. But God made sure to Israel and said that I am in control that uh, Isaiah vision uh, showed him 
that the king of Zia uh, could do many great things for the nation, but there is God who could do much more. Isaiah not only saw that the Lord was sitting upon a throne, but he also saw the train of his robe fill the temple. A robe of a king describes how glorious, how luxurious, and how powerful a king is. Uh, the, the Queen Elizabeth, when she was elected and she became queen, she was wearing this uh, uh, great uh, robe at the time. And he was, she has to be assisted by many people. This is a picture of it. This shows how great her power was. And this is what, what the Bible is saying. The train of his robe filled the temple. It was filling the temple. Imagine how big God's robe is. How big God's power is. How powerful he is over all this earth. Isaiah 6 verse 2 continues. Above him stood the seraphim. Each had six wings. With two he covered his face. And with the two he covered his feet. And with two he flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of His glory. And the foundations of the thresholds shook at the voice of Him who called. And the house was filled with smoke. Not only did God show uh, Isaiah how He is sovereign, but He also showed him uh, what the seraphim was saying, that our God is holy, holy, holy. G Isaiah's vision was also repeated in Revelations 4, and it was written by John at the time, holy, holy, holy is God. John saw the same vision, just like uh, Isaiah. Isaiah was uh, uh, eight before Christ, year eight before Christ, and he said, holy, holy, holy. And John, approximately uh, 86 years after Christ was born, uh, said the same thing about holy, holy, holy by John. The worship shall never, ch the worship shall never, never change. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. That describes how our God never changed. His character remains the same. It's very interesting. The seraphim didn't say love, lover, uh, 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 the provision, the provider, the provider, the provider, or the helper, the helper, the helper. He didn't say that. They didn't say that. But they said, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. This is what, it's what, it's, it's because the holiness of God, it's not, it's not one of God's characters. But in fact, holiness is the, the character of God. Holiness of God is the most important character of God. There's no other characteristic that was repeated three times by the Bible. We know when it's repeated three times, it's so important. Holy, holy, holy. It describes how, how it's so important. Holiness is the true character of God. This character describes how He is perfect. And He is so uh, different than all the other creations. And He's so different from all, all other gods. This is the meaning of the word uh, holiness. Not only that he is perfect, but he also has a different quality, differentiate from all the other creations. In different uh, qualities of a diamond, there's different qualities in diamond. The very bottom quality, it's called the VVS1, or it's called very, very slightly included. There's a little bit of flaw uh, in the diamond. And it's so hard to uh, to see it, even if you if you if you look at it from a magnifying glass. Uh, the next layer it's IF, which is internally flawless. 
if you use the 10 times of magnifying glass, you can, you can really see it. And even better, the highest quality is FL or flawless, without a flaw. Even if you look at it from a 10 times of a magnifying glass. Our Lord is holy, 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 flawless, flawless, flawless. If you want to look at Him from a magnifying glass 10 times, 100 times, thousand times, you will see that God is flawless without a flaw. Amen? God's holiness also recap all attributes of God. It means that His forgiveness is perfect. It means that His love is perfect. It means that His timing is, is perfect. His word is perfect. His help is perfect. His wisdom is perfect. His plan is perfect. His will is perfect. Everything is flawless. That is why it said in Psalm 86 verse 8 says, There is none like you among the gods, O Lord, nor are there any works like yours. There is no other gods that his help is like His, or His promise is like His. No one uh, can compare to Him. When the seraphim said, Holy, 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 seraphim said, God is so different. He is enthroned uh, much higher than anything, any situation that they may face. There is no other God who loves like Him. No other God who has perspective like Him. No other God is better than Him. No, no other God is more just than Him. Our God is much better than other gods. It's good to know the Holy God. But how does that relate to me? What is it? What's in it for me? Verse Peter uh, 1, 16 says, Since it is written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. I think many of us understand that God wants us to live holy. But the problem is when, when we say, you are holy, it seems like it's something that is impossible to do. It's, it's, a, it's a request that is so difficult to be fulfilled because we know that it's hard for us to live holy. It's hard for us to live flawless because we are human. And I know that Isaiah experienced the same thing. If we look at the uh, verse 5, it says that, Woe is me, for I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of, of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Even Isaiah, the prophet of God who is being used by God, when he faced the Lord, he knew that he's, he wasn't worthy. He knew that he uh, was lost. He was a man of unclean lips. He was sinful. And he was facing the sinless God. Holiness of God uh, clarifies how we are unholy. Uh, last week, when I was, uh, I was trying to prepare, uh, as I was blessing a, a, a wedding, uh, a marriage of, of, of a couple, and when, as I was preparing, I was looking at my white shirt and I realized that I compare my white shirt that I picked uh, with the other white shirts that it turns out that there is uh, a, a wider shirt than the one that I picked. Uh, many of us uh, feel, perhaps feel like, oh, our lives right now, is it's fine. But when we compare our lives with God's character, with His holiness, it clarifies how we are uh, not holy. One thing that I want to share with you. God's holiness, holiness of God, makes us humble. Amen? Holiness of God makes us humble. If there is a person who lives holy, then he becomes proud. He feels like he's holier than other people. Then he hasn't seen God's holiness. The priests, 
the scribes uh, at the time, some of them felt like they are they live better than the other people. They forgot about God's holiness. It is impossible for somebody who has seen God's holiness to become proud. Billy Graham said that only if we understand God's holiness, then we will understand how sinful we are. Just like Isaiah, when he saw, uh, uh, and it says that there is no hope for me. Woe is me, for I am lost. Isaiah 6 verse 5. There needs to be humility when we walk in, in holiness. Matthew 5, 3, we often read it. It says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who realize that they need or they have spiritual needs. A blessed life, it's a life for those who who knows they have spiritual needs. We, we have to realize that we have spiritual needs. We need a Savior. Why do we need a Savior? Because we know how sinful we are. We need the Lord because we know that how limited we are. To live holy uh, never makes us proud. To live holy makes us humble because we know that we are uh, lost, sinful. Uh, we are sinful people that is being saved by grace. Secondly, holiness of God makes us out from sinful life. Holiness of God takes us out from sinful life. In Isaiah 6, verse 6, the seraphim uh, said, came to Isaiah and took a burning coal and touched it to uh, Isaiah's mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin is atoned for. Isaiah knew that he wasn't holy. But it's not because of his effort that he can become holy. Isaiah was made holy not because of what he did, but because what was being done to him. Imagine your tongue is, is being touched by a burning coal. I remember when I was a little kid, my dad gave me a, what, a ball of wasabi. He said to me, this is good, go eat it. And when I tasted it, wow, it's so spicy. Imagine Isaiah when his lip was touched by a burning coal. Probably wasn't comfortable, but that made him holy. In 1 John 2, verse 2, it says that he is the propitiation for our sins. And not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Jesus was given to us to forgive all our sins so that we may not live in a sinful life so that we can get out and get out of our old life. The, God's holiness not only separate us, God's holiness can uh, judge and convict us. As we learn from King Ozia, he did something he wasn't supposed to do and God judged him. But God's holiness also reach out to the sinful people. God's holiness provides uh, the way to forgive and make people holy. Jesus Christ is the mediator that God's been that, that God gives to us to live holy. If God asked us to live holy, not because of our own effort, but it's because God has given His own Son, Jesus Christ, that is so perfect and we've been redeemed in full. And our life is being sanctified by Him. God has given us a holy life, 
that doesn't start from zero. But He has given us a holy life uh, starting from a perfect number. If I give you a, a present of a shirt, for example, for example, if I give to Pastor Petra, he opened up the gift, but then it was actually a, a thread and a needle and all other things. Pastor Petra will say, you know, what is this? And he, he felt like he has to make this shirt by his own. But if I give a shirt, the shirt is already done. The only thing Pastor Petra needs to do is to wear that. Amen? What God has done for us is not for us to work on our salvation. We only need to, to accept Jesus Christ and we wear that holiness. What Pastor Petra, if he appreciates the, the gift that I gave him, is he needs to maintain that gift. He needs to take care of it. He needs to take care of the gift, just like us. Let us take care the holiness that is God already gave to us. Amen? Holiness is not the way to Christ. Christ is the way to holiness. Holiness takes us out from the old life. Not only that, not only that we get out of the old life, but holiness of God makes us live for God. Many people say, oh, I'm so thankful that I'm being forgiven. But they live the same life. Holiness of God makes us to live for God, not to live for ourselves. Because when Isaiah was uh, made holy, he knew, he heard, uh, and he answered in, in, in Isaiah 6, 8, says that, um, here I am, send me. I dedicate my life to live for God. Amen? To live holy means to live exclusively for God. When I uh, married my wife, I, I made my marriage uh, holy. I only live exclusively uh, for, for my wife. The whole holy life is not just about moral. We can have good morals because we, we need a job. We, we act uh, rightfully. Uh, we can have a good moral because we want to be, uh, we want to please other people. We have good moral because maybe our parents asked us to. In, in the Bible, there was a story about a young man who was doing everything perfectly. And, but then God said, okay, fine. Then now sell everything that you have. But that the young man failed. The, the, he had good morale, but he didn't live for God. A holiness, a holy life is a life, living life for God. In 2 Timothy 2.21, it says, Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from what is dishonorable, he will be a vessel for honorable use, set apart as holy, useful to the master of the house, ready for every good work. A special utensil. It's like martabak, special. For honorable use, your life will be clean and you will be ready for the master to use you for every good work. We keep our life holy so that God can use our life. My car uh, has a sticker in the back. It says that please use uh, the type of gas of 92 or uh, octane. I know that the gas price is up. It's pretty sensitive. But I, I want to share with you that my car, it's dedicated for a minimal octane number of 92. Can I use other octane number? Can. But my car will, wouldn't perform if it's not given an octane number 92 or above. Same thing with us. We're being, we're being made holy by God. And we're being dedicated to be filled with an octane of, of, of the heavenly. Don't fill it with the gas that is lower quality in this world. Let us fill our lives 
with the word of God. Fill our life uh, by by uh, uh, having a relationship with with God, by doing His will. You may be able to fill uh, your life with uh, things that are not of God, and it will eventually diminish the performance of that car because I'm inserting uh, fuel that is not uh, uh, proper. Same thing, if we let the unholy things to be entering our lives, then it will, it will impact, negatively impact our spiritual walk with God. When we read the Word of God, The Word of God. God is holy. God makes us, makes us holy. Not the activities, not the spiritual activities, but the presence of God makes us holy. Amen? Holiness of God makes us yield to God's will. Holiness of God makes us yield to God's will. Isaiah 6, 9, 10, it says, and he said, go and say to his people, keep on hearing, but do not understand. Keep on seeing, but do not perceive. Make the heart of this people dull and their ears heavy and blind their eyes, lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their hearts and turn and be healed. A request uh, that God asked Isaiah. And as a, as, as a, as a pastor, I said, you know, it's it's very difficult, you know, to open a church, but no one came. To preach, but no one listened. No one understood. Uh, a ministry that was difficult to do. For a pastor like me, it's very difficult. Imagine we're being asked, oh, how many people in your congregation? Nobody. How many years have you served so long? How many people attended your church service? Oh, nobody. Imagine that. Oh, maybe I want to I want to I want to change the message so that more people will come so that people will like me. But Isaiah throughout his ministry never changed the the message of God because he relied on God's message not on the message of what he wants to deliver. This is life. A life, a holy life, is more than just saying yes to his plan. Holy life is more than just saying yes to his love. Holy life is more than just saying yes to his favors. Holy life is saying yes to God. Saying yes to whatever that pleases God. Be because we belong to Him. Saying yes to whatever pleases God. But why? Because we are His. Amen? God's Word in Colossians 3 23, it says, whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not for men. Whatever we do, do it for the glory of God. Amen. Our job, whatever our position may be, it doesn't need to be a manager. Even as you, as an office boy, you do it wholeheartedly. As a driver, as a direct report, whoever you may be. Sometimes we say, oh, later if I, if I be the manager, then I'll be more serious. Same thing. When we go to school, we have to do it wholeheartedly. Just like we do it for God. Not for our, your parents, not, our, not for other people, but for God. To forgive, we should do it also. To do it just like God. To do it for God. Learn to forgive. Because that is the will of God. Amen. I have a friend. He works in the company. 
uh, one time um, he was being sued and also his company by a uh, by a customer uh, because the customer felt like it was something uh, a wrong procedure by the company but actually in reality there was no mistake uh, uh, or, or fault in the company but the customer sued him um, and the company said you know the con- company knew that there was nothing wrong uh, that the company did uh, this is just a request uh, by a irresponsible customer but then my friend prayed and I asked God what should I do uh, he's being asked and sued for uh, millions of rupiah he prayed and then God said to him give the uh, millions of rupiah to that customer and then he struggled and he said to God God but it wasn't our mistake but he received it from God's word to give it anyways he consulted with his spouse uh, and then his spouse said are you sure it's from God uh, this is a big amount that we have to give and then they agreed uh, to give it and it was very difficult for him this millions of of rupiah is very meaningful it's so big for his family but he knew god's word then he changed he he gave this so then he he ended up giving this amount to the customer full of peace uh, to the customer um he he didn't hold uh hold it against the customer he just gave it and the spouse the family uh, uh can can give cheerfully because he knew that that's what god asked them to do holiness god's holiness we can do things that god wants us to do even if it's against our own flesh holiness holiness is not to love jesus and do whatever you want holiness is to love god and do what he wants every hour and every day of our life amen how did my friend did it because i knew he often have a fellowship with god how did uh, john peter can do uh, do uh, miraculous things In Act 14, 4.13, it says that they were astonished because they recognized that they had been with Jesus. If we continue to be with Jesus, we can do it. May I close? How many of us are often angry when we work and because our boss is giving us something, a job that is out of our job description? And we said to him, well, this is not part of my job task. And we became tired, fatigued, uh, because we're being given tasks that are not part of our job desk, Christian. Well, what about our life? God already gave us a, a job description. Be holy, for I am holy. And we are doing things that are outside of job description. We're doing unholy things. and our lives become full of complaints and we become tired and weary because we are doing things that are not part of our job description amen today if you feel like pastor john you, you see that how holy god is you know how far you are from god let us humble ourselves and said god i need you I know I need you. And you may pray with me. Take me out out of out of this life. From this sinful life. And I want to live for you. I want to live for you. Not only to live for you, but I want to put you first in my life. Every hour, every day. When you live humble with God, out from the sinful life when you live for God yield to God's will you will live the holy life that God has prepared for you let us pray 
Father, I pray, I thank you that you have made us holy. Now that we just need to take care of it. The life that you've given us, that we can take care of our holiness, to live for you, to put you first in our life. Thank you, God. Because there is no other gods like you. There is only one God who was willing to come down to the world and died for the sinful people. All other gods, we need to do something. But you are the only God who's willing to come down and give your, whole, your only Son, Jesus Christ, for us so that we may become holy. Truly, there is no other gods like you. Only one word that we want to lift up to you. Holy, 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 the Lord of hosts. Amen. Amen. Right now, we're going to uh, take part of the communion. You may prepare your communion. In Matthew 26, 26 to 28. Now as they were eating, Jesus took bread. And after blessing, He broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Every time we take this bread, we remember how God has given Jesus Christ to make us holy. He broke the bread and He blessed it. Jesus Christ is the greatest blessing that God gave to us. Let us take this bread. And then He took a cup. And when He had given thanks, He gave it to them and saying, Drink of it, all of you. For this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Every time we drink from this, we know that we've been taken out from the sinful life. And God wants us to live for Him, to prioritize Him. Let us take part of this. Thank you, Lord. Let us lift up our hands and receive His blessings. Father, we truly are thankful because we hear today that we are walking with the Holy God. Holy, holy, holy. God, uh, may we live and, and live our lives, the holy life. According to you, will teach us to walk with you so that our lives can be, can shine the, your glory. Receive God's blessing. Blessed be the God in Jesus Christ to give you all the spiritual blessings for those who believe and the love of the Father, the love of the Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit is with you. Bless you. Bless your family. Bless your job. Bless everything that you do. Uh, receive God's blessing and become a blessing for other people. In the name of Jesus, receive God's blessings. Amen. Happy Sunday. Lord Jesus bless you.